Hey, what's going on guys? Jay here. Welcome back to another video. Now, this is a special episode because for the first time we've got an international guest coming all the way from Japan. Uh, you guys have probably heard of him already if you do street photography, but Ulysses. Hi everyone, this is Ulysses. I came from Tokyo and I'm meeting Jay. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And um, I didn't come only for Jay. Sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> I put him on point and then said wow. we should do this video. Okay. Sorry yeah, about that. Fair enough. And now I'm, <laughs> the pressure's on, right? I'm, I'm sweating really hard right now. Um, so the plan is uh, there is no plan. Uh, we decided to spontaneously meet up in Town Hall and we walked here all the way to uh, Circular Key. So we're just going to keep walking basically and take photos along the way. Uh, maybe ask Ulysses some questions that I'm always curious about. But yeah, we'll see how things go. Sure. Sounds great. Yeah. Let's go, sir. Let's do it. Let's do it. You guys are both exploring the avenues of uh -huh. abstraction and Reflections? Yeah. It, it's funny because I think I've always been that way. Um, it just like uh, when you're getting into street photography, I think yeah. you look up to the kind of the same people everyone does. And you kind of have to get it out of your system. Because I've true. never really been too subject oriented actually. I've always looked at colors and patterns. Yeah. But that has just been like enhanced so much more as I take more and more and more photos. <clears throat> Because I've always been, I mean, the reason I got into street photography was because I loved that canon photography had an art to it. Like mm -hmm. you look at Armin cartier versan's work and then it's, it's about the geometry and stuff. It's about the patterns actually more than the subject. Yes. Um, and that's what got me into photography because I was like, oh, there's an art aspect to photography. Um, so yeah, I've, I, I've actually always been kind of into that stuff more than being like, hey, funny person. I just feel like I'm not at that point yet. I'm not advanced enough to pursue it. I, I dabble in it. Uh -huh. Whenever I see a reflection, I'm just playing with it. Mm -hmm. But I, at the end of the day, I, I still look at my photos and I'm like, oh, it's not there yet. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, feel, I feel that the same way, but um, I don't know. I feel like there, there, there are definitely multiple kind of angles to what you just said. I think like one thing is uh, even with less subject oriented photos like as you said the abstractions and the reflections and whatnot um, one thing is when you're <coughs> when, let's say you're putting together like a project or a book um, it's hard to only do it with that um, I, I'm learning that the better books or the better projects always have like a good mixture of both yeah. like the people in the portraits are usually the glue of yes. the project because it provides a human context uh, and kind of a more of a story to what you're telling yep. um, and the abstractions and the more kind of compositional uh, pieces they maybe they're actually the main body of the story but just making a gigantic project of like abstractions there's less context to it usually yeah um, so that's something that I'm learning and I need to do a little bit more is actually incorporating more like candid portraits into my work. So yeah, I mean, I'm still trying to overcome that too. You mentioned like Bruce Gilden, but I actually see like Bruce's work, like it's very like compositional too. It's up close, but like there's such a like flow of human beings. That's true. And he talks so much about composition. That's also a big part of his like mantra, I think. I think his, his that thing yeah. where he like does the angle. So that's to get the composition that he wants though. Like, so if I take a photo like of these people flat on here, then it just ends up being a bunch of like people bunched up together, right? Yeah. But if I go at an angle like that, then now you have a flow of like three people. Okay. I against, can't really see the back of your screen, but okay. Against, now you have, see now you have, it's a terrible photo, but yeah. now you have three people and you have this three, triangles on the opera house and it's a bad photo but what i'm trying to say is like i just didn't get any of that in focus but, <laughs> but I, I get it i get but, what you mean though yeah it's 
and I think that's what he's doing with like moving his body like that yeah. very quickly. He's looking at, he's finding an angle that all these, like when you look at a Bruce Gilden photo, it's all these faces, all these characters that make sense individually. But unless you're at a specific angle, you're not able to get the, the angle or the tilts of the heads right. Yes. And then maybe they're overlapping too yes, much. Yes, that's true. Um, so it's very, I think it's very compositional, but it's almost like a, he's taking like a gigantic group portrait sometimes. That's which is pretty funny. So uh, Sydney for street photography. How do you find it compared to other countries that you visit? Because I know every country has its pros and cons. Yeah. It's just interesting to see uh, your perspective on that. I like it in general. Uh, I think the good thing about Sydney is that there are like multiple areas um, that provide very different types of photos. I've been walking a lot and I see a lot of like different places that have like, I think if you stay there long enough, you can take pretty good photos. Mm -hmm. But it seems like a lot of people tend to kind of stick to the same place. Yeah. Just, I find that interesting uh, around like uh, Town Hall in the central area. Yep. Um, but in general, the lights like it's very harsh, but it's nice. You did um, kind of go out of the urban, uh, the metro areas. <laughs> I did, Asia. I did, yeah. Um, would you say that for Australia in general is more suited to things like landscape? I mean, you know, d dude, it's, you know, it's funny, like, I'm a candid photographer, but when you look at it, I, I just take photos wherever I'm at in general. If you look at it from the map, mm -hmm. like, Australia is like... <laughs> it's, it's a small, uh, <laughs> concentrated population in a small, tiny area. Yeah. And then everywhere else is just desert and greenery. Yeah, so, like, there's obviously, there's a big opportunity for just general, like, nature photographs and landscape photographs, yeah. I think and it's beautiful. One thing though in Sydney that I realized is that what people wear are super important, I think, yep. for street photographs. That's true. Um, very colorful. So like it's, when you take a color photograph, it tends to be a, a bit scattered sometimes. Mm. I think the colors and um, kind of in the cities too, uh, the buildings are colorful. There are a lot of, a lot of glass too. A lot yep. of like different colorful kind of uh, pieces of art as well. Um, so getting that into context starts becoming really hard. Um, so you either, I think you need to like limit uh, what you're taking photographs of. So like if you do it with a wide angle without putting too much thought into it, it starts getting super chaotic. Oh yeah. That's kind of similar to like Tokyo, I think. Um, but yeah, limiting color palette or subjects is a good thing. Uh, but it's also, I find it's also kind of challenging, I would say. All right, so we all know you're a, a kind of known to be a fashionista at times. <laughs> at, at times, not always. <laughs> go, go check out his uh, videos up here. I'll link you guys to one of his uh, Daily Essentials videos where he goes over his stuff. I did that, I did that, yeah, yeah. But um, just let's see what's going on with you right now. What are you rocking on your wrist? Yeah, uh, this is a, uh, it's a pre date just uh, oyster perpetual date relics it's in 1979 um, this was issued to i think police officers in the uae so there's only a few thousand of them from what i know uh, but they're not that popular because these days bigger watches are pretty popular yeah, right. so like it looks like a crazy crazy ass piece but like it wasn't that expensive i mean it was expensive but it wasn't like that crazy um, so how yeah. many watches do you have in total? I don't have many actually. This was the, the the stupid story was that this was my first big boy watch. Yes. But I got it on an auction, uh -huh. and people think I'm fucking crazy for that because what? why? Because like you don't buy your first watch on an auction site. <laughs> if it's a vintage and you can't get it anymore, yeah, and exactly. You like the look of it, then I think the only other way is to go auction. Yeah, right? it was just funny, but yeah, it was a ballsy move. I agree. Yeah, um, but. I also have, um, I have a few other interesting G-Shocks, which I use a lot, actually. If you could only have one watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, budget, not an option. Yeah. Like, budget aside, what would it be? At this mo very moment in time, what I want as a versatile watch is actually like a Cartier. Okay. Cartier Tank Louis. Um, just because like, I still do a lot of like corporate work too. Yes. I do wear suits sometimes. But I also like 
dressing up in general. So having a kind of like a beater-ish watch with like a level of elegance to it. So what are we working with here? It's the FX3. Honestly, I've had so many half-assed video options in my life. Yep. And all of them, I've wasted so much money for that. Um, getting... Is this an ad or like a... <laughs> Is this paid promotion? The moment I met this camera. <laughs> <laughs> my life, no. No, uh, but no, honestly this was... It was expensive, but I'm really happy I got it. Just because like, yeah. It fixes video issues. Because like everyone and their mom uses a Sony now. But like you have, and you have all the YouTubers talking about it. So oh, it's yeah. like, everyone tells you how to use it. So it's great. Nice. What do you think is the better one? 28 or 40? 28. 28? Well, no, so I, I feel like, so for this form factor, 28 is better. So with this form factor, what you want to do as a consumer is you want to take photos of your beautiful girlfriend or yes. you want to take photos of food. Correct. When it's 40, it's just like you don't get the whole thing in frame. Oh, that's good. Yeah, with this, like, you have you have the LCD, right? But yeah. when it's a 40, it's actually pretty hard to get it straight. Um, just because, like, you know, with more compression, it's hard to, it gets tilted really quickly. That's cool. Without a viewfinder, it's really hard to get a 40 straight, I think. And honestly, with this one, it's, it's a nice lens, but, like, it still kind of looks, kind of looks like a cropped, <laughs> in 28 or something. Oh, really? Yeah. So you still get a slight distortion on the... I don't know, it's hard to <clears> say. <throat> like, if, don't quote me on this, but it kind of looks like a... It's just a personal It looks like a wide-angle lens. I had like a few years, <clears throat> especially when I started, <clears throat> where I gotta be honest that I was like very, very, very driven. I'm happy I did it and I'm still like pretty serious about it, but not as much as before, mm. but no, I had a very clear goal in mind, but what I learned is that um, like art in general, there's so many pathways, even if you have a goal in mind, it never ends. So I had a goal in mind and it was, maybe it wasn't as big of a goal as I should have set it. I hit it and then after that, I'm just like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm limiting myself here, but the output in photography as an art form is always quite I feel it a little bit limiting, like you, you, there are exhibits and galleries and museums and whatnot, you know, that's great, um, you know, but it's like, what the fuck out, like you have a book. Yeah, I feel that. But if you, if you look into like other art forms, there's like so, so many bigger things that you can that's do. Right, yeah. You can have installations, you can have people experience your work, you can fucking, like, what the fuck is this, right? You could, you could paint the entire opera house, <laughs> right? which they do. But it's funny because like, I think with photography, um, I feel like, uh, yeah, again, maybe it's me limiting myself. I don't know. But I do feel some kind of a, kind of like it's in a box. Like the, the output that you can provide is... There's is, only so much that you can do yeah. within the constraints. Yeah, and it also has to do with just how the, uh, the output itself of a photograph, you know, it's a, it's a photograph. So what more can you do with it is a great yeah, question because once you start fucking up a photograph it's not a photograph anymore oh yeah yeah it becomes that's digital true. art it becomes abstract art pieces which is great and i love but then again that's not a photograph anymore yeah so it's like what's the and to what point can a photograph stay a photograph and be a big thing is is a question that i always have yeah um, oh yeah getting too deep it is no no that, <laughs> that, that's a valid you know thing to think about because nowadays there's so many ways to create a photograph and there's a lot of people on social media influencing the next generation of photographers with questionable yeah. processes yeah. that kind of draws the line between well are we going too far mm -hmm. thanks for sticking around to the end of the video as an added bonus for you guys i have the full conversation with ulysses as an unlisted video here on my YouTube. To access it, all you have to do is go onto my Instagram and follow me there. And in my bio, there will be a link to that video. So if you're interested, go do check it out. But thanks again for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time.